AIP for connected construction. AIP is going to give me a common operating picture for my organization and my construction sites. I'm bringing together data from my different sources like Autodesk, P6, Maximo, Procore, invoices, purchase orders, emails, all of the unstructured data across my business. I can create powerful workflows on top of this for things like alerting, decision simulations, AI-assisted automations. This is going to help me manage my sites more effectively and ultimately make better decisions. All right, let's dive in. When you start a project, you have this pristine plan that lays out years of work, labor, and cost. But as we know, things change. How do you keep track of those and adapt to it? With AIP, I'm able to look across my portfolio sites and get a top line view of these critical metrics. So you can see in the example here, I've got six projects with alerts. I spent $13 million last month. That's 23% underestimated. That's great. Uh, on the flip side, on my estimated cost this month, I'm up 117% projecting at 29 million, probably something I'm gonna wanna dig into. And then I'm also down 2% on my percent of work orders on scheduled bursts last month. Another thing I'm probably gonna wanna dig into. So each one of these sites is likely managed in a different way with different contractors, different systems. AIP brings all the data from these different systems together. For example, P6 from schedules, Maximo for work orders, work planning, Procore for on-site work tracking. This is foundational to make operational decisions across my portfolio. So whether I need to transfer machinery from one location to another or manage cash flows to get through this crunch, that's all in this cockpit. Awesome. All right, let's dig into one example. So we click here, you can see Hazleton, Pennsylvania, this site. Uh, and the project in some high-level view. So if we click here, we can see the site again and some different metrics with a little bit more detail just for this site. So you can see one project is made up of many, many work orders. It could be hundreds, thousands, or hundreds of thousands of work orders to finish a project off with some high-level metric for this project. So if we click on schedule then, we can also see things that are alerted. So I can go in and generate alerts. Hey, I want to know when a uh, something started um, later than it should have, like this one, or the work's taking longer than expected. What do I need to do? Are we blocked on material? So this gives me the key indicators of what I want to dig into and look at. All right. If we click on the schedule, you can see here, this is some of our dynamic scheduling primitives. So I can understand on the pucks, all the different work orders, how they're laid out in the order they need to happen. So I know, for example, in this case, maybe I'm going to be behind on materials. So there's a shortage of this and there's some supply chain constraints. I'm going to need to move this back by about four weeks. So I can come in here and say, let's shift this back by four weeks and then hit submit. So in the dynamic scheduling here, I'm working in these scenarios to play out what all these different changes will look like to my overall project plan. So right now I'm just actually playing the scenario so I can see the changes that I'm going to make. And then when I'm done, I can actually hit review on those and then submit them back to P6 to make it the operational truth of my business now. So again, this is closing the entire loop, integrating across all those systems in real time. All right, I'm back at the main project page here. So we just got done looking at the scheduling tab. Let's take a look at the design tab now. So shrink the map down. And you can see here, this is actually the BIM file for this project itself. So I can actually come and interact with this natively inside the platform. This is pretty slick. So I've ontologized this unstructured data, this 3D model from the BIM file into my business. Now I understand each component of the BIM file and how that links back into work orders or materials across my business. It's pretty cool. So when we do that, what does that unlock? So first of all, you can see here, we actually have a chat feature. So this is pretty cool. Like I can see how many columns are in the project. So 179, um, what is the total volume of the columns? You can go do the math across the objects in the ontology for me. That's pretty slick. We can also have it show the columns in the actual BIM viewer here. So while that's working, I'll show you, you can, you can actually see how it's doing this as well. So in here, I can see the tool usage, understanding how it actually navigated the ontology, found the right things, filtered to get the math of 179 columns. Similarly, here on the volume calculations, I can understand and see the tool usage. This is trust through transparency. Very cool. All right, cool. Now I can actually see the visualization to show me the 179 columns in my BIM viewer, and I can go inspect and look at them. So this is how I'm bridging my unstructured data, the BIM files with my structured data and allowing AIP to navigate across. It's pretty impressive, but is it valuable? Chat is still a limited interface. So let's see how we can make more operational value out of this with my procurement process. All right. So now we're on the budget tab. So we looked at schedules and how we ontologize data from one system for schedules. And we've looked at the BIM files um, in our design tab. Now in the budget, I need to understand what my actual true cost through invoices and other financial reporting. 
So now that I've been able to ontologize all these different pieces, I have all this data in one place that I can understand and navigate in real time to get a pulse on my cash flow and use this information to help make different decisions. So in this case, I can see where I'm running on my budget. I'm able to generate these alerts so I can stay focused on where am I varying from plan and I can go dig in. Because these are all connected through the ontology, I can look at this work order, understand the schedule, the raw materials, all the things that are needed, and I can triage and actually root cause fixing these problems before they get out of control, helping keep my project on time and on budget. That's awesome. So normally we have these contracts and we go through procurement to set these contracts in place. Those are the agreements that store all the information about our relationship with our supplier. Let's dig into that a little bit more. So if we go to our procurement center here, you can see this would be like a normal contract with a company. Um, and so this is a pretty short one. This is only five pages, right? So this is a pretty small one. Usually there are tens or hundreds of pages long with all the different terms um, and then even things about the cost discounts. All of that is in these PDFs. It's very unstructured. So we've done another video on procurement. We'll put a link in the note here so you can get a deeper dive on how this actually works. But you can see this PDF, we've actually used AIP to extract summary of the key terms out of here. So I understand what's in place for this contract at a high level. And then I can do even Q&A asking it about this contract. Instead of trying to read through and find keywords in a hundred and something page PDF, I can ask it uh, questions using AIP and it will give me answers back using the document as a source of truth. All right, and then we can also extract things like key terms. So now we ontologize the different key terms that allow me to essentially look and compare the terms versus the invoices. Are these invoices following the terms of the agreement that we had in place? And they can flag that in alert where we're having variance from what those agreements say. It's pretty cool. And then you can even see the price component. So as I'm trying to track costs, now I can have the actual prices, discounts, everything from the contract bounced up against those invoices, making sure that I'm paying the right amount to my vendors. This is pretty cool. All right, that's great that I have my procurement process in place for setting the contracts up, getting all the terms in there, that's awesome. The rubber meets the road when I actually need to go buy things, get materials for my projects at the right place at the right time to keep things moving. All right, so this is a simple example. This is an easy email. It could come from another system, phone call. Lots of different sources can be integrated. For the simplicity's sake here, this is just a simple email. I need 160 watt light bulbs for this Dallas construction project by the 24th. So we're going to walk through the steps that are going to be automated here. So this first one is actually going to parse it. So you can see it got submitted. It parsed it. It matched it to the ontology. This is how we ground it in the truth of your business through the ontology. So you can see I've done that. I got the, the uh, order quantity and the date that I needed by. That's awesome. Very cool. Show you this little modified button here. Everything across the platform, we want humans in the loop that we can review it. This is trust through transparency. You can come in here and audit what's being done, change things as CUC fit. Then we get into the materials. So I might need this 60 watt light bulb, but maybe another 60 watt, watt light bulb is more available, cheaper in the area that you're in. So can I swap those out? This is where material harmonization comes in. We just did a video on this. We'll put a link to it so you can go dive deep into material harmonization with AIP as well. We'll put it in the notes here for you. But here I have three different materials that might be very like items that I could use to fill this need for um, the project. Pretty cool. So I can find everything through the ontology about where it's been used before, how I've ordered, what vendors I've used, all that's right at my fingertips. Then we look at vendor comparison. So now I can look at, hey, I have a framework agreement. I have a contract with this vendor and they happen to be the lowest lead time at the lowest price by quite a long shot. This is a pretty no brainer uh, situation. So, hey, I'm going to select this vendor is what I want to move forward with. That's great. Then we get to the last step of the vendor selection. So you can see in here, I, it, AIP has actually automated the order for me because it had a high confidence score. We had a framework agreement in place. It's the lowest cost, lowest lead time, meets all the requirements. I'm just going to place the order on your behalf. This is great. This is how we start to scale and allow humans to get more done, but still give the transparency. This is key to adoption of AI in your business. AIP for connected construction is one of my favorite AIP now applications because it brings together so much of this unstructured data into one view and makes it actionable. It's giving a unified picture of the critical information about your construction sites, then allowing you to create sophisticated workflows that are driving your organization to move from local optimization of sites and tools to global connected optimizations of your business. So what you saw today was just an intro. We'll go deeper in future videos, so stay tuned.